everybody, I'm Jan Nappage. I am the food system specialist with the nutrition education program with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension. And we are here today in Boyd County at the Boyd County Extension office and we are working on building a raised bed. The advantages to growing in raised beds um, can be kind of endless and a lot of folks prefer it to growing in the ground it's more easily accessible so you can make it to the height that you like and you can actually make it so you can sit on the edge and lean over as opposed to crouching or bending your back and maybe um, you know creating some back pain it's easier to weed a raised bed because most of the time the soil is not quite as compacted as growing in the ground and also Raised beds tend to have greater drainage for the soil, so your uh, roots won't have as much tendency to rot or to for fungus to grow and things like that. And then lastly, folks like to grow in raised beds because of how it looks. It keeps the garden looking nice and neat, and folks know where you're growing and where you can stand, and there's really no question about it. So when you're picking a location for your raised bed or your raised bed garden, you want to make sure you pick a very sunny spot in your yard. And this is because plants need the sun to grow. It's their food. So look for the sunniest spot if you have one, maybe six to eight hours of sunlight at least a day. And also a good reason to grow close to your house is so that you're walking past it and looking out at it every day so you can monitor the soil moisture and if you need to water. Also, if there are weeds kind of growing up along your fruits and vegetables, you'll be more likely to pull them uh, if you're seeing it every day, multiple times a day. Things to consider when you design, build, and install your raised beds. The maximum width for most raised beds is four feet. This makes it easy to reach the middle of the beds without stepping on the soil. If you build your beds against a wall, the maximum width should be between two to three feet since you only have access from one side. The bed can be any length, but be aware that the longer the length, the more potential for warping and flexing of the wood. For most vegetables, your raised bed should be a minimum of 12 inches. This height means you'll still have to stoop over quite a bit. For gardeners of a certain age or those with limited mobility, Making a bed two to three feet tall can alleviate the amount of stooping and harm to your back. Gardening is great exercise, especially as you get older. If it's easier to do, you'll get out and tend to the garden more. Get some exercise and have a healthy food as a result. If you make more than one raised bed, be sure to leave about two feet of room between the beds so you can access them both easily. Raised beds can be bought as a kit or simply built from scratch. Kits are extremely simple, but they cost more money. If you want to make your own bed out of wood, you have some options. Treated lumber, as the name implies, has been treated with chemicals to resist rot. Most gardeners stay away from these materials, but fortunately there are other options. Rot resistant lumber is probably one of the best choices. An example of this would be cedar. This lumber costs more, but will last for many years. Third, thicker, untreated lumber can often gain you several more years of durability. Lastly, beds can be built out of recycled boards. If placing your bed in a grassy area, some people like to remove the grass first, which is quite a bit of work. Landscape fabric or newspaper works just as well to smother the grass when you place the beds on top of it. When building a raised bed, do not just fill it with soil from your yard, which may contain weed seeds or plant diseases. Instead, mix together 25% of the soil from your yard, or what's called native soil, and 75% of potting mix. Potting mix has a coarser texture than native soil and will have better drainage. Because of this, a raised bed will dry out more quickly than a traditional garden, and you may have to water more frequently. When purchasing potting mix, look for a product that contains things like peat moss, core, compost, wood products, sand, pea gravel, perlite, or vermiculite. It is also possible to make your own potting soil with some of these components. If I want to overfill it, because the rain will cause this to settle down, 
We would like to thank the Boyd County Extension Office and the Sanibel House for hosting us today and then also for building the bed that we have seen throughout this video. Raised beds cost a little up front, but will pay back for many years to come. For more information, check out the publication Gardening in Small Spaces or contact your local county extension agent.